Welcome art friends, it's Dina Tollefson and today we're going to be working on painting this wonderful chicken scene, this little farm scene. And I'm so glad that you're here today. It's gonna to be a great one. We'll get our pyro orange on the canvas or on the palette. There we go. And do we have everything? Oh, we need, um, let's see, we have yellow ochre, our ultramarine blue, primary yellow, diarylide yellow, dioxazine purple, phthalo blue red shade, French ultramarine, Mars black. Oh, titanium white. We need titanium white yet too. We'll get that over here. Get a little bit bigger puddle of that since white is used often. And we're painting white chickens, so we'll be using a lot of white here. So um, I'm gonna start with kind of, uh, let's establish, I'm gonna dip the water, dip my brush in the water and come in with this middle color and kind of draw in an area where we have the light and the dark in the chicken yard. And we're gonna have an area of dark here behind our chickens because we want to, the area, wherever we have the area of light against dark, that's gonna, um, when we have light against dark, what it does for us is it creates an area of tension. And let's just lay in the area of dark to establish the dark area. So we're gonna go in and just make this whole area dark. The area, we can always come in and get closer, but I just wanna kinda get area where we're gonna kinda carve out where the chickens are standing. And also using, um, when I'm coming in with this brush, I'm also thinking about with the foliage, uh, the different growth patterns. So, so some areas are gonna be a little darker than others. And some are gonna be a little lighter. Try and have that variation. We can make things darker or lighter, but this gets us kind of going here with our initial pattern. What I like about um, using a tonal underpainting is we can already just by putting in the background, this is called negative painting when we're painting around our subject. If our subject is the chicken, Mr. Chicken, Mr. Rooster and his hen, um, by painting around them, we are essentially um, doing what's called negative painting or we're painting around the subject. All right, so here we have more of a line now. We're getting closer now that we've laid in some of the color, we can use this same background color and come in and start to show a little bit of the anatomy of the, of the two birds by showing the angles that their bodies are. So I'm looking here at our photo, I'm looking at the edges here. And this part is a little bit darker. Then back over here, we have, this is a little, we need to have a little bit of shadow here. Let's get a little bit of shading up here. And as we're doing this, we're describing our bird. And this is dark in here. So you can see already the difference between when we have described um, just using our tonal underpainting when we have described the, um, start to put some shadow in, how all of a sudden we get more of a 3D look and then you see how she still looks very flat because we haven't done anything with her yet. So let's come over and give her a little attention. So let's come in here. And so this acrylic paint is still, uh, you can see that it's still a little bit wet. And so it's nice to kind of move it around on the canvas now that it's a little wet. And then now 
this angle here needs to come more like this. So we need to have something like this kind of shape coming over here. And really when you're painting, it's all about, I guess, really going in and adjusting and having a layer like this is really nice, this underpainting layer, because you can really play with your shape until you get it the way you want. So it's just really a play between the light and the dark color. So let's go in and come back over with the dark. Get this angle here, come back with dark. Okay, so I'm back. So I let this painting, this um, tonal underpainting dry for a half hour. So when you're painting um, along with me, you know, be sure to let your painting dry at least a half hour, but you can let it dry a, a day, several days, weeks, even months and then go on to this next step. Now we're ready for color, which is exciting. Yay, we're ready for color. Then we need our chicken in um, the chicken body when it's not in the sun. So we can take the white and mix in a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of our purple, our dioxazine purple. This is our chicken and kind of when he's not in the sun, kind of in the light shade. Uh, this is a little bit dark, so let's add a little bit more yellow to that and then maybe this will be the color. So I went a little too dark with that. This I like this color here. So this could be our chicken, chicken body. Then we can go in and mix, mix now some darks. So we can have a little bit of French ultramarine with the white. And also the purple and the ultramarine or the um, yellow ochre. Mix up some shade colors or some darker colors for our chicken and our rooster. So it's really about mixing these colors. I really like the idea of mixing my colors ahead of time before I go to the canvas so I have a plan of um, what I, a plan about my colors, what my colors are gonna look like. So then we have a little bit of lighter one. We added a little bit of the naphthol red. So just kind of making a nice mix of these colors. And now we can wipe this off. All right, because most of our scene really, and let's get this tipped up here. So now that we have some colors, we have some greens going here. We have some chicken body colors. Now we have this and we can go ahead and start with the painting. And let's zoom out. There we go. Okay, get this in the right amount there. There we go. All right, so now that we have our colors mixed up that we're gonna use for the chicken, or the chickens, let's go ahead and get started um, with their body color. I'm gonna go in with this kind of medium color that we mixed. And I want to just be careful and place the colors where I'm seeing these lighter colors. So seeing some over here, seeing this color here. I see this color also up on the back of the bird. And then in the feather areas. And let's get these same colors that we see on Mrs. Hen, Miss Hen. And here, and then we see that color. Also, the light color 
over here and then kind of on that puffy part of her body. I saw that there was a spot on him where I'm seeing some almost a blue color and that's coming in right through the center of his body. And then down as the colors change. And then also on the edge, back over here. Whoops, now I got a color where I didn't want it. So I'm gonna come back over with just some plain water. There we go. I'll take that back off. All right, and then also I'm seeing some of this blue back in through here and a little bit here. Just kind of looking to see, you know, like what color, what color, um, when you're doing this, you want to kind of just be thinking about, you know, what color is. I mean, is it necessarily white or can we, you know, introduce another shade to it? I like the idea of having not just one color. I like to have many colors in my painting and this is kind of a way to introduce it is if you kind of just really look at your subject and see, well, what colors am I actually seeing? Do I see? Or, or maybe what colors am I feeling? My feeling this blue color. And now let's go into this darker part of the bird. And I'm gonna use this kind of purple color that we mixed. And also just allowing if there are any color areas that, making sure that it's dark enough because it's like a mistake would be to now make our colors too light. And I'm also allowing some of this color to peek in from the other, some of the underpainting can show through. That's okay, I actually kind of like when that happens. And I don't want to over blend. So being careful not to over blend. This kind of purple color on her. I'm not necessarily going for, I don't want to necessarily be like looking at like a photorealism kind of thing. I'm going more for like an emotional, what's an emotional response to this, to these chickens? What, um, how do we feel about them? What are the colors that describe them? And then also thinking about like the, like for example, like this tail, um, when we're painting the tail, we're thinking about the bird itself. And we'll get a little pink, that kind of pink color. And then I'm seeing this pink color in through here as well. And I see that on her coming in, in the bottom area. And then back here as well, there's a little bit of this, it feels like there's some pink there. Now I'm gonna come back with the blue. The blue is actually more this shape. So we're gonna go back over. Blend that a little bit there, that's good. All right, so now, let's think about the leg. So the leg um, actually is not really super, um, the leg on the bird is not really that pronounced. 
but we want to get almost maybe paint around it might be the way to go get a little bit of a highlight there is a highlight we want to get and they have really pointy feet they've got um and the males that was the other thing too the males on these birds have a spur that um, the females do not have. So that's also one difference between male and female chickens is there's this extra little spur thing in the back that the males have. And I made the legs too light on the female. So let's pull that back off. That was too visible. And I want to draw, I want to get the spur. So let's maybe use this purple color that we have. And then we have the light next to that. And what we also want to just think about with the leg is drawing the, um, we can draw the shadow of where the foot makes contact with the ground. And we can describe that. So I'm gonna go in with kind of this darker color and then that's called grounding. When you describe where something is hitting, for example, hitting the ground, it leaves a little mark underneath. I say it leaves a mark underneath. It leaves a, um, like you see a shape underneath the, we'll get a little mark there. Um, there's a shape where the ground touches and you get a shadow. So we need to blend underneath that and just soften that edge. Where we grounded it, there we go but just kind of this idea of where the foot is touching the ground. We can kind of ground over here as well. But we don't see much of, she's really kind of in the grass. We don't want to overdo her leg. Okay, so now, let's go over here and um, work on the, the head of our bird a little bit. So, got this we have the cat uh, we have the pyro orange and we have the napthal red and we can use those colors to um, to describe the the tops of the birds heads so oh and then also one thing that we didn't do yet too is we didn't also uh, we can come in with a little highlight color so we've got this color of the bird, um, the highlight color. We can come in and get that as well because that's important. So the highlight on this bird is coming in. We have a little bit of highlight here. And then on our female, we have a little highlight here. And then in through this back areas of the feathers, we have a spot here and then on her back. So let's go now. I wanna go in now that we have the highlight, let me just soften these edges. Draw a line there. Sometimes if you need to soften an edge, all it takes is moving the brush in a little different direction. Like that, there we go. And then up here we have got some highlights as well. I can see that I've got too much highlight 
down in this area. So let's come back over because that area is the body is turning. Let's make that this color again. And then come back over with our purple. And fix that. It's actually more of a shape like that. And even more so like that, there we go. All right, so now back over to the top of their heads. So we have where the sun is hitting it. So let's see here, let's start with the orange. There are these shapes up at the top of Mr. Rooster. And then she's got just a little bit of a top on hers. And then if I come in with the red, let's put the red in. And then below here, we have these coxcomb area and so a little bit of the red here and then we've got a little bit in the face on her and now I'm going to take um, a little bit of this dioxazine purple and mix that in with the red to make a darker color you also could do that with a lizard crimson or use a lizard crimson but let's put this dark color back here. This is going right behind the bird's head. And underneath. Up here as well. We'll get a couple marks here. And then she's got some dark hair as well. And then this dark color also goes to the eye area. So there's an eye area here that extends to that. And then we need to carve out the beak. I'll say carve out the beak, meaning we need to show where the beak area is. So let me soften this a little bit. And let's darken this color underneath the beak. So adding a little bit more of the dioxazine purple. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit on that. So there's a dark color that we can put in, just using the dioxazine purple. We'll get a shape going with that below here and then also in here. Then back behind here, we're gonna make that even darker. And then she's gonna have a dark area here too. And then back in here, all right. And I've drawn this with a little bit of a, of a curve. This actually needs to come out and be a shape more like this. coming across like that, so that's better. And then we can put the, this dark red in here again. Uh, 
and change that shape like that. And then do that also with her as well. Now the beak itself, we're just gonna show the highlight, or we just need to show a highlight where the beak is. So I'm gonna come in, let's get a smaller brush. Grab our brushes here. Let's just get a small round over here to work on our beak. And so the top of the beak, we can use this diarylide yellow for the top of the beak. And that would be coming in right around here. And then on her, she just has a tiny little beak. Over there, we'll just kind of indicate her beak. And then the bottom of his beak can be the um, yellow ochre that comes in across over here. And I've drawn it in too far, so let me now fix that, get rid of that. And let's also use some of our dark color to paint out or to, to do a negative shape. And make that beak the, the shape that we want. And it's a little too pointy. Get a little mark there to show the edge of the beak. And then to show his eye, he's got a tiny, kind of a tiny eye. You don't want to make it too big or too obvious. All right, and then let's go in and use this smaller brush and put in a couple of like a little highlight area. And if the There's also a little spot over here I see on him. We'll get that with some purple. Going back to our bigger, going back to our bigger brush, let's get that just softened. There, that's better, okay. All right, so now we are ready to go in and um, put in our grasses. So let's go in here with our larger brush. So this is our, we have our number 10 size or just any large round brush. The reason I like to use a round brush <clears throat> in these areas is because a round brush, um, you can do like some kind of very lyrical movements and a, um, a long handled round brush, you can hold far away and so you can make some kind of calligraphy kind of moves. So going in here, let's take our lightest green I have over here. And let's uh, just do a little bit of almost calligraphy here. Get the feeling we want to really emphasize the idea of sunlight. And we can get that uh, back in here as well. So there's like a dappled sunlight effect. Oh, let's come in over here. The medium green. and put our medium greens in as well. Can you hear Scrunchy giving a little bark? She's giving a little bark. She wants to help paint today. All right, 
we'll use the negative painting here by painting down into the feathers. And if we got it too far where we didn't want it, let me rinse that off. I got some green where I didn't want it. So we do want some of the green reflecting into the bird because it's a it's a barnyard scene and we've got these kind of wonderful green areas. But we don't want to have too much green that our bird looks like he's anemic. So we'll get some cool greens going on there. And now some darks. We'll get some darks against our bird. You can see when you really put a dark in how the dark really sets off the light. So dark setting off light, we'll get some of these darks. So we really want our birds to be the star of the show here in the farmyard. And then I'm picking this um, dark that we mixed by using our primary yellow and our Mars black together. We got this kind of wonderful dark color. Let's extend this dark so that we have a path of dark coming over to here to the light. Let's get some of the lighter greens, the brighter greens up mixed in here. with our light. Again, we don't want to cover up the dark areas that we established on the in the tonal underpainting, but we want to just add a little more color. Then you can always decide when you're working on your painting how much color you either want to have or not have. So I'm liking, I'm gonna add a little bit of this dark. Let's make this dark even a little darker. Add a little blue in here. Let's really punch up the dark. Get a really nice contrast going. between our lights and our darks. This will make our bird really stand out. And then by contrast, his legs kind of automatically come into focus by just painting around them. Let's take this wonderful deep dark color that we have and add that a little bit in behind Miss Hen as well, connecting that dark, reinforcing the areas of light and dark that we established in our underpainting phase. And I got a little bit of, I'll zoom in here, I got a little bit of color where I didn't want it on her, so I'll Come back into my bucket of water and just wipe that off. Get that off of her, just scrub it off. Then I can come back and paint that spot again. And cover that area up. There we go. All right, so let's continue getting this dark color. In and out where we want it to go and deepen and darken the idea of a cool shadowy day here in some of the, the foliage.
So the way to make something look lighter and brighter is to put something dark next to it. So that's why I'm really emphasizing the dark colors is that will make our bright colors or our light colors feel brighter and lighter. All right, now rinsing off my brush here and the and getting a nice clean brush. I'm going to go in I this line here. I'm going to I uh this line here is kind of bothering me, so I'm going to fix this here. Whoops, that's too light of a green. Let's come back in with the light color. There we go. And let's integrate these two colors together a little more. Just lay another layer of that light green over our existing colors. And instead of having a line of dark, let's go in with a medium green right behind our rooster's head. And make that more of a vertical or a horizontal line like that. There we go. And in the front here, let's uh, take some of these greens and brighten some of the areas with a little bit brighter light green in another layer. Just nice and light and bright. And then we can darken this corner that we talked about earlier where it's kind of nice to have a dark corner for some unknown reason having a dark corner on a painting is always pleasing but <laughs> if you and again if you know why uh, leave me a comment if you know why that is I haven't figured it out I can't figure out exactly why that is but it just kind of is a thing all right let's integrate these two areas of light and dark a little more with some middle tone by just scumbling this over here Get some more of our original darker color and just kind of get the feeling like we've got some dappled sunlight. I feel like I've got a little bit too much of the dark, so let's adjust that by putting some layers of lighter green over here. So the nice thing is when you're working on your own version, you can always make adjustments. Light over dark, dark over light. We'll get a little light color up here. So we want overall a dark shape in a diagonal on this composition with some darks up at the top, but it doesn't have to all be just a solid dark. We can vary that with different shades and tones Let's get a little bit more dark underneath and between the leg. I feel like I made his leg a little too thin. We don't want a skinny leg on our, too skinny of a leg on our bird. Let's go in, I'm just taking the filbert brush with a little bit of water on it and just coming back over to, there we go. Make that adjustment. Then in here I can make that grounding color just a little bit for detail. Just a little bit uh, of the edge here behind the spur. Then 
And for the eye, I feel like we can make the eye a little bit more dynamic. Let's go up here to the eye of our chicken. And I'm going to use this um, brush here. This is a number two brush, but a small round brush. But let's go up here and I'm going to Let's see, that's a maybe too zoomed in. Well, maybe it's okay. Just a little touch for the eye. And then a little dot of white. Made two dots of white. Let me go in now. And it happens to you just put a little dark over it again. There. All right, so now we have the eye, and her, um, Miss Hen back there, she's far enough away that we don't necessarily need to do the dark, but we could do, could do the light of her eye. Oh, that's too bright. Better to underdo the eye than overdo it. There, that's better. All right, so let's zoom back out again. All right, well, I feel like, I feel like we're really closer. I feel like I'm ready to go ahead and, um, let me know, I need to make an adjustment here. Um, let's make a little adjustment here, and then I feel like we're getting close where we can get ready to sign the painting. So her body goes in like that. We need an adjustment here with that, with the shadowing. But we can use that same kind of purpley color, the dark color, and just go in and give her a better edge. Then over in here, this dark color, we can add even a little bit more of the blue, green. Give her a little more dimension. And under here as well, since she's more in a shadowed area, that makes more sense that, that we don't want her totally blue either. So let's Mix that with a little bit of the purple and see if we can get a something that works a little better. Yeah, that's better. Then there's a shape under here. Then he has a shape. Let's do that same kind of bluey purple color. Let's get, so he has a shape that we need to emphasize in here as well. So I'm just taking this original shadow color, which was the Thalo Blue Red Shade, and the um, Thalo Blue Red Shade plus small amount of yellow ochre. Let's get that color there, okay. And under here, and then down here as well. And let's remove a little bit of that on this edge here. And put a little bit of the pink. To soften that. Blend that a little bit. I'm just running the edge of the just running the edge of the um, brush. And we 
I need a little bit of a lighter color here and then back in here. And back over here for the leg. There. There, all right, and then now let's blend that. Let's blend that. And let's blend that, so back here. All right, so now the next step is to sign the painting. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna take a liner brush. So this is a, we know it's a liner because it says liner, but liners have, um, they're like really nice for signing your painting or signing your name. And the way to do that is I like to sign in black. You can use any color that you like to sign, but how you do that is you take, get some water, and then mix up a consistency of your paint so that it's a little bit like ink, a little inky. So instead of right out of the tube, we wanna have it be watered down. Let's see what nice how easy that is. It's almost like if you think about like a quill pen, you want to have it where your ink, where it makes a nice mark. If you just use it directly um, out of the tube, it's a little bit harder to work with. But um, So let's go ahead and sign. And I like to use my um, first initial and then full last name. And um, it's important to sign your work because people want to see your signature. They wanna know who painted it. And it's a way to show that you're proud of what you've made is when you sign it. So I made a little boo-boo right there, there we go. All right. So here is the finished painting. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with me here today, and I hope that you'll come back and see me again soon. So until next time, it's Dina Tollefson, and all my best to you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, my Art Club members. I appreciate you.